Welcome to the fourth program of the ELIAMEP Mediascope Media Series, in short, ELIMED, a joint project of ELIAMEP, Mediascope, and the Center for Applied Turkey Studies, CATS, which is based at the think tank SWP here in Berlin and supported by Stiftung Mercato and the German Federal Forum Office. CATS is also the curator of the so called CATS Network, an international network of think tanks and research institutions working on Turkey. ELIMED is a project of this network. The ELIMED series consists of seven programs touching upon different issues of Turkey's domestic and foreign policy. For each webinar, a policy paper summarizing the key points raised during these webinars will also be published. In this way, ELIMED aims to contribute to a more informed and sophisticated debate on these important issues. Another aim of the project is to have at least 50% women in the programs and to include also examples from outside Turkey. And as you will see soon, we today perfectly fit these criteria. Our topic today is to what extent the Turkish opposition, the opposition alliance, is a value-based alliance. What values are these? How credible are the participating parties and politicians? And how do voters care at all? Or will not the economy or other issues be more important at the final decision at the ballot box? We will discuss these issues with three outstanding uh, experts, Cezin Rene, Osman Sert, and Özge Monjubay, Aybars, whom you will see soon, and whom I welcome to the program, thanking them for joining. I would like to ask uh, Cezin Rene at the beginning to briefly summarize what lessons the Hungarian example could teach opposition parties in other countries, which are also facing authoritarian leaders. Uh, well, to what extent was the alliance, opposition alliance in Hungary, uh, was a value-based uh, alliance? Uh, in different periods, for example, uh, at the time of the uh, Budapest uh, mayor uh, elections, the local elections, it was a more value-based election uh, alliance. Uh, but afterwards, after uh, in the uh, general election, uh, when general elections were, uh, was taking place, uh, and uh, candidate Peter Markizai. Uh, in his campaign, I don't think he really made a value-based uh, campaign in general or endorsed values in the way uh, that's different from Orban. That's the, um, uh, that was the main issue in my uh, view. Uh, so, uh, as we know, Peter Markizai uh, was a conservative candidate. Uh, he liked to under underline that. He, he, he was a young uh, politician, but at the same time, he was a conservative one. And he had won previously in Hod Mezo uh, a town, small town with an impossible name to uh, pronounce for non Hungarian speakers. Uh, and it was the bastion of uh, actually Fides for a long time. So, in Turkey's case, it's like uh, of course, Kayseri or Konya are much bigger uh, places, but imagine Kayseri or Konya being lost to CHP, for example. Uh, or at least uh, if we take the uh, example from the uh, recent, uh, for example, uh, Istanbul uh, elections, which we just uh, commemorated the, the uh, anniversary, actually. Uh, in the se uh, second round, uh, for example, CHP received more votes in the party, conservative party district. Uh, it was a land shift, uh, uh, uh, a turning uh, point like that one when uh, Peter Markizai uh, won at Hod uh, Mezovasharhe. So that uh, victory uh, was the example that he wanted to uh, repeat and. Uh, he, uh, Actually, the whole opposition wanted to emulate, but it didn't work out. Uh, on the contrary, Orban's values were re-endorsed in a way uh, when Peter Markizai didn't say uh, something much different than uh, what Orban was saying. For example, family values, let's say, conservative values in general, Christianity, uh, things like uh, symbolic uh, issues like that uh, were uh, propagated by uh, Peter Markizai in very similar terms and uh, uh, mindset uh, as Orban did. So, uh, in that sense, uh, there wasn't a new uh, package waiting for the 
electrodes. Uh, that that was the idea. The the electrode cut. And uh, although the uh, participation rate wasn't uh, that low compared to Hungarian standards, uh, around 70%, uh, at the same time, there wasn't a big rush uh, from the opposition voters. Uh, they didn't flock to the uh, ballot box in a very excited way, uh, so to say, because they were again, uh, in a way, electing a, a, another conservative candidate. Uh, th that was the, the uh, perception people got, actually. Uh, and, of course, the, the, another surprise was the uh, rise of the Miha the uh, that uh, new party, the new movement, totally anti-immigration uh, uh, movement. Uh, and it became the third uh, biggest force, actually, in the Hungarian politics. Again, uh, as you see, we had a wide array of, actually, uh, right-wing uh, selection, uh, right-wing options, uh, ranging from Orban to the opposition itself. And the uh, farthest right, uh, of course, was Miha Zeng. Uh, and this Our Homeland movement actually made uh, Orban look benign and uh, in a way moved Orban uh, to the center. Uh, this was the uh, scene in the Hungarian elections and why this is why the opposition uh, actually in my view couldn't win and, and as different from Turkey of course uh, in Hungary at the time there wasn't an, a, a big and deepening economic crisis so uh, the electorate also didn't feel the need uh, to change and uh, in general uh, Orban, uh, in a way, uh, now has the reign. And recently, there was the, for example, local elections uh, just recently in Hungary, and uh, it's a deluge of uh, Fidesz because Fidesz is winning everywhere, including Budapest now. So the oppo opposition is losing uh, ground even farther after the uh, general elections. Uh, thank you for this introduction. And before we come to the point whether in Turkey we have a newer package and whether there's more motivation, I would uh, like to ask uh, Osman Sert what convinced conservative parties with a background in political Islam, especially Saadet, Deva and Gelecek, to join an alliance with a representative of Kemalism and, and the Nationalist Party to opponents for a long time. Osman Sert is the research director of Ankara Institute uh, which is also a member of the Katz Network, by the way. He has a background in journalism. He was the diplomatic editor at CNN Turk and bureau chief in Jerusalem for TRT. And he served as an advisor for Ahmed Davutoglu when he was both foreign and prime minister. He's one of the editors of Perspective Online and also a columnist at Kara newspaper. This can be brief at the beginning now. Thanks. Thank you so much, Ekrem, for your introduction. And thanks to Elia Mep and uh, Katz Network and Media Mediascope for just providing us with this platform and of course it's a very good thing to share the same platform with this you know prominent ladies uh, talking about the values and against authoritarianism regarding what's how these conservative parties are joining this uh, table of six let's say uh, first of all there are two dynamics uh, becoming possible and and, and uh, the, the, this this joining of different parties uh, indeed today the opposition of six are representing almost all of the, you know, the political uh, traditions in Turkey, except the, the, the Kurdish politics. You know, the leftists and rightists and Islamists and nationalists and Kemalists all are just coming together. I think there are two main dynamics which made this possible. First is the, the journey of the conservative parties. What, what we, they are not defining themselves as conservative, but it is making uh, easier to understand and label them. You know, the Gelecek Deva and uh, Saadet party, see, the, the journey they have experienced during a conservative uh, party's rule of the country, especially during the last 10 years, uh, both uh, Mr. Mr. Davutoglu and Mr. Babacan were active members of AK Party governments, and after a while they were not sharing uh, the experience they are living within AK Party, and especially uh, they have been very strong quarrels and clashes with President Erdogan. They do not have the same uh, country vision and the world vision. And that, that's why they were not sharing the same vision of our party. And that's why we shouldn't describe all the conservatives, all the, you know, uh, uh, devout Muslims 
or the Islamist uh, politicians as if they are representing a monolithic uh, political stance. It is not so. It, on the contrary, if you look at what's happening today to our party, uh, President Erdogan just uh, consolidated its pa his power as long as he uh, just um, cancelled the power of the other quote-unquote Islamists. What I'm talking about, you know, uh, Mr. Abdullah Kül, if you call him as an Islamist, or uh, Bülent Arınç, or Abdullah Kül, uh, Ahmet Davutoğlu, or Ali Babacan, or Bashir Atalay. These were the very known, Ömer, Çil uh, Ömer Dinçer were prominent, quote-unquote again, uh, Islamist or conservative uh, politicians. And President Erdogan, uh, one by one, uh, just, just, just, uh, take them out, kick off the party, and then he owned the party himself. And uh, this made, you know, a journey and they have questioned what they are doing and they are questioning what kind of a country they are dreaming for. And and this is the number, number one thing. And and after a while, and I think uh, Professor uh, Dautul was using this, they have seen their limits, but not only the Islamists have seen their limits to rule the country without consulting, without uh, uh, agreeing upon uh, the future with the others. I'm talking about the Kamalists and secularists as the other, and and it it brought them to to the more the more middle of the political spectrum. But another dynamic is uh, we are as if we are not talking about all the Islams or conservatives are the same. Not all of them at the one time, and they are not the same throughout the time. Uh, they are not the same as the 20 years ago. It is the same for the Kamalists and secularists as well. Just look at what's happening at the CHP. Uh, meeting room at the parliament uh, just 10 years ago uh, the, the, the the the the very popular names who who were you know uh, famous for uh, creating some uh, convincing rooms for the head scouts you know girls not to enter into the universities to in order to make them open up their hats just leave their head scouts they were being applauded uh, very, you know, uh, enthusiastically, ambitiously at the CHP salon. And now today, uh, the CHP uh, leader, uh, Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu, is just apologizing uh, from the head scout uh, people that it was something wrong we have done. And our uh, priority should be something different regarding the economy, regarding development, regarding uh, democracy. And these two dynamics are just bringing these two poles much closer to each other. And this made much more easier and possible that this uh, opposition six became possible. Otherwise, suppose that the CHP is still supporting, you know, the very, you know, hardliner secularist uh, line, it won't be possible for the other party to join this group. Or may, maybe it's, it, it was the same, this conservative parties were still just, uh, it was a, a, a very old discussion and an old conservative uh, old conversation in Turkey that supported quote unquote Islam state. I do not remember any time Professor Davutol or Babacan uh, just were supporting an Islam state, but this was a discussion. Now they are not, they are not supporting, it. even they are supporting and demanding a secular state which is you know, as respectful for religions. These both dynamics made this possible, and maybe we can, we can discuss on uh, later on. It is a value-based coming together, but of course we shouldn't be so romantic because these are political parties. They are not coming together just because of values, but for practical obligations. We can discuss it later on as well. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, you already said something about the CHP. We'll see whether Özge Mundru Aybars will uh, agree to this. I mean, I will ask you the basically the same question, but from the more from the CHP angle. I know that you're not a CHP politician, but you you're an advisor to one of the leading uh, CHP uh, politicians. Uh, so why do they join forces with political currents, as uh, Osman Bey has just described, that they fought for decades? Uh, when it comes to CHP, everyone uh, uh, raises a, an eyebrow because the CHP is the most <laughs> criticized political party in uh, from every uh, political party is in Turkey, uh, not uh, not the governing party, not only from the governing party, but uh, these two years, I think we we had faced a lot of uh, differences in political agenda, and uh, one of one of the important thing is that the, the transition to uh, presidential system had created the parliamentary more weakened uh, than the, than its uh, earlier uh, than than its power. So uh, what we can say that the, uh, the parliament is weakened. Uh, so the MPs uh, the, 
if you, if you don't have a majority in power uh, in the parliament, you you cannot pass a bill. You cannot. You can only ask uh, questions, uh, political uh, questions, inquiries to the um, to the ministers. And uh, also, you can use Twitter for political campaigning. So uh, this is the what kind of sphere that we are talking about. There is a, a repression in media, repression to people. Uh, for instance, um, we had last uh, two years ago. We have the Pride Walk, and it was uh, banned by the governors. So uh, I think uh, um, 300, uh, 300 people were detained for a uh, for a while. Uh, for joining this uh, walk, uh, band walk. So we are living in a kind of uh, an era that everyone is oppressed, not uh, the so-called the known ones like the uh, the Kurds or um, uh, or the students or the syndicate workers. Now everybody is uh, facing with a kind of oppression uh, coming from from the uh, governing party exactly. So uh, CHP, uh, well, uh, with six parties, three of them, as uh, Osman mentioned, is uh, from coming from the Islamic roots with various different backgrounds. Yes, ideological backgrounds, sure. Um, one of them is uh, a new party, but coming from a nationalistic uh, party with from MHP and the Good Party and uh, CHP, as we have already know, is the uh, is the founding. Party of Turkey and also Democratic Party, the smallest member of this alliance. Well, um, they had made some meetings like uh, every month uh, they are meeting uh, with uh, one party is hosting. Uh, so, well, uh, they had said something that I want to underline. Uh, they said something, and uh, I think I have to look at the dates. In uh, 29th and 30 May 2022, like uh, a month ago, they said that uh, they they had some key principles. Uh, they declared some key principles, but as a quotation, they said, "As political parties of different political traditions, we have chosen to cooperate and join forces to make our country more peaceful." happier, more prosperous, freer, and more democratic as we step into the second century of our republic. We will continue this uh, cooperation until we have achieved our goals with the support of our nation. So there are uh, several uh, discussions about this uh, table of six uh, we are saying right now. And uh, sometimes it's table of six, sometimes it's uh, other name and uh, the governing party is also using that there are some cracks in the table of six. But uh, as far as I uh, as far as I know, uh, there is there is no cracks. But there are difference uh, of opinions exactly in foreign policy in other issues because they are all coming from different ideological traditions, ideological backgrounds, and it's normal to have that kind of uh, political debates inside. But um, well, uh, from that uh, key principle on objectives, they have said, uh, declared nine or I'm sorry, ten uh, points. Uh, it's strengthening parliamentary system based on the principle of separation of powers, liberal public order, pluralistic participatory and liberal democracy to end all kinds of discrimination, Freedom of thought, expression, and the press, freedom of religion and conscience, social peace and accountability before an impartial independent judiciary, welfare state and income justice, production and employment oriented economy, uh, political ethics reform, effective and reputable foreign policy. So, uh, the CHP was just uh, the main opposition party, uh, but uh, well, they are meeting all the time. Uh, when um, I started uh, like uh, advisor four years ago, uh, this meetings has ju just started uh, after a year, I think. From like three years, they are meeting with person to person, uh, leader to leader first, 
then it changed uh, to table of six. So it was a process. Uh, and also the local elections, uh, winning Istanbul and winning Ankara at the same time, winning the uh, major uh, municipalities, metropolitan municipalities in Turkey, had changed all, also altered the atmosphere of that there will be a chance to win uh, the elections. So people want to, uh, people know that this kind of presidential system is not working at all. Uh, and uh, all the uh, bills are uh, coming to parliamentary, is coming from the palace, uh, not from the MPs, from the ruling party, although they have their uh, signature on it. And uh, uh, everyone is uh, just, powerless in the parliamentary so they are saying that strengthening parliamentary system returning to uh, a, uh, a new system not return to a new system returning to an improved parliamentary system not like uh, the 1982 uh, constitution had just uh, declared as it to be so uh, okay that's in this part that's uh, what what i will tell uh, I think uh, we, we're at a point uh, where uh, I'm going to uh, take a terminology from the conflict resolution literature. Uh, we are in a, a, a place where there's a hurting stale stalemate. Uh, William Zartman's uh, terminology uh, is this one, uh, the hurting sta stalemate. And uh, when you're at a position like this, you really want to change things are and uh, uh, engage in conflict resolution uh, because it's hur hurting you. Uh, I think this is what's happening with the uh, Turkish electorates in general with the uh, economic crisis. Uh, and uh, if, uh, if we think counterfactually, had there not been an economic crisis and uh, economic issues were to going totally fine in Turkey, then maybe we wouldn't have seen the opposition rising so much. In that sense, the electorate is viewing uh, the opposition with new eyes, but also at the same time, the opposition is, of course, uh, renewing itself. And I think one of the reasons, key reasons, uh, key factors behind this is local politics, actually, because now we have, for example, uh, there was one photograph a uh, few, uh, few months ago. Uh, there was this uh, meeting of CHP of the mayors in uh, the easternmost city of one and at the table there was Mansur Yavaş, Ankara's mayor, uh, Ekrem İmamoğlu, Istanbul's mayor and Tunç Soyer, uh, İzmir's mayor, sitting all together uh, at, at the same table and I thought that when uh, seeing this uh, photo it's almost 70 percent of the Turkish electorate support sitting at one table and uh, current CHP has this. It's not just about Ankara and the uh, party uh, uh, elite, let's say, or uh, this uh, uh, table, table of six, uh, but it's also it's a multitude of new characters coming to the fore. And even the old characters are rebranding themselves. So we have now, uh, I liken the Turkish political scene, the opposition political scene to Avengers in a way. Uh, you have superheroes that you can pick and choose from. Uh, you can like that character or uh, the other one better, but uh, you can pick and choose and th there are a multitude of them. Uh, so uh, I think this is strengthening the opposition and we are seeing the opposition with new eyes and the, at the same time, the opposition, uh, old figures, even old figures like Meral Akşener uh, or uh, Ahmet Davutoğlu are rebranding themselves because uh, they have to compete and they're taking this competition really seriously. So they are uh, evaluating and re-evaluating their opinions. Uh, I know that uh, uh, most of these leaders are working really engaged full time uh, with the uh, uh, grassroots, uh, so they they are reflecting. They're either uh, having polls conducted, uh, research always uh, coming to them, or they are somehow attached with the grassroots and they are trying to rebrand uh, what they're saying. They're uh, evaluating uh, themselves and they're engaging in self-criticism. Uh, 
Uh, and in that sense, that brings a, a, a, a big uh, dynamism to the Turkey's opposition as uh, it never happened before. Uh, so uh, in that sense, there is a two-way street uh, there, both from the elect uh, electric side and also from the opposition side. Uh, the, there, there is an interaction and dynamism, a synergy in a way, uh, nurturing itself. Thank you very much for this last answer, but also for all your contributions. I wanted to touch upon some other issues. At the beginning, I thought 75 minutes is very long, but now it turns out to be that it could have been longer. The role of the of the media, for example, both in Hungary and Turkey, we, we couldn't find time uh, this time. I'm sure, I mean, the, the issue at all uh, will not be discussed for the last time. Uh, if there are elections uh, scheduled normally, we have one almost one more year to go and the issue will come up uh, many times. So many thanks for, for your participation and for your contributions. And I would also like to thank uh, the team at Mediascope for their technical support, Cuts for making it possible, of course, and Eliamep for, for all its support. As I said at the beginning, there will be a policy brief, uh, a couple of pages where I will summarize the main findings of this webinar that will be published and also on the Iliamap website and also on the CUTS network. And uh, so we've come to an end. I, I, I wish you all uh, a not too hot summer. Uh, stay healthy and uh, see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. A summer without fires, hopefully. <laughs>